First you separate, and then you integrate Just follow these steps, and you will do great First you separate, and then you integrate Just follow these steps, and you will do great First you separate, and then you integrate Just follow these steps, and you will do great Tis the season to be serving When I was solving equations, I was feeling amazing Greetings math people, so in the first video uh, we made a convincing argument about the relationship of the sum of two numbers, the average of two numbers, and how those numbers relate to the average. We just made a convincing argument using three examples. I, I would now like to formally just prove the fact that if I take the average of two numbers, that those numbers are going to be equal distant from the average, meaning if one number is bigger than the other, the bigger number will be the same number of units bigger than the average and the smaller number is less than the average. And of course, those two numbers are the same, those numbers will equal the average and again, they'll be the same distance of the average because that distance in that case would be zero. So let's prove it real quick. So say I have two numbers A and B where B is greater than A. And A and B can be complex numbers. So I have two numbers A and B where B is greater than A. And I have a value defined as X bar, where X bar is A plus B over 2. That's called the average. So B minus X bar, I want to call that value U. So that's actually what we called it in the first video. So B is the bigger number, so B is theoretically greater than the mean, and so B minus X bar is U. Now I want to see if X bar minus A is the same thing. So right now I don't know, so I'll call the value K. So where A is the smaller of the two numbers, which means it will be smaller than the mean, and so x bar minus a is some number k. If the values of u and k are equal, then we have proved that two numbers are equal distance from their average. Okay, so let's just do the calculation. So uh, x bar is a plus b over 2. And b, I need b to have a denominator of 2, so I'm going to write b as 2b over 2 minus a plus b over 2. And that will equal u. So what you see will happen, you'll have 2b minus b, which is just b. The minus sign also gets applied to the a, so that'll be negative a. And so that'll be b minus a over 2. So u is b minus a over 2. So now we have to see if k equals the same thing. If so, then we have successfully proven that all numbers are equal distance from their, all numbers, all pair of numbers are equal distance uh, from their average. So again, x bar is a plus b over 2. And again, I would like to have, I would like a to have a denominator of 2, so I'll write it as 2a over 2, 2a over 2, that equals k, and there's nothing really happening to the b, and a minus 2a is negative a, so that would be b minus a over 2. So, u was b minus a over 2, k was b minus a over 2, so we have shown that the difference of the two numbers from the average is exactly the same. Now I want to look deeper at this formula and bring some correlations to stuff that we already know. And so I'll just throw up an example problem, remind you of how we do it, and do a critical analysis of the situation. So uh, let's say we have x squared minus 120x plus 3599. So we know if we were to solve this problem, uh, we would say x is 60 plus or minus the square root of 60 squared minus 3599. 
So that's what we, we would do to solve the problem. Uh, we would get 61 and 59 as, as our answer. But I want to leave it like this for analysis sake. Now, this number 60, this is what we call X bar. And again, X bar, you know, it's just half the coefficient of X. Well, the opposite sign. So it's the opposite sign of the coefficient of X. So X bar technically is negative B over 2. Now, this number here, this is what we traditionally call C in a quadratic equation. So if we want to write out what we've been doing as a formula, our formula for X would be X is X bar plus or minus the square root of X bar squared minus C. That's the new quadratic formula we've been using. There it is. So x is x bar plus or minus the square root of x bar squared minus c. But let's dig deeper into this particular formula. Now again, x bar is negative b over 2. So I would like to plug that in for x bar. So I'm just saying x is negative b over 2 plus or minus the square root. Uh, negative b over 2 squared is b squared over 4, b squared over 4 minus c. Okay, so let me find a common denominator in that radical. I would have to put c over 4, that would be 4c over 4. So x would be negative b over 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared over 4 minus 4c over 4. And so x will be negative b over 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4c over 4. Now you can take the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2. And this also has a denominator of 2. So I can combine these as one fraction where I'll get x is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4c all over 2. So the little formula we were doing is really this. And this should look very familiar to you. This is the traditional quadratic formula. What's the difference? In, in cases, in the type of problems we use for this particular scenario, the value of a is 1. And so that's why you don't see a 2 times a down here because a is 1. That's why you don't see a 4ac here because a is 1. So really what we've been doing is really just a quadratic formula in the special case when a is 1. So though it was a unique technique and it worked very well for certain type of problems, in essence, it was a shortened look at the quadratic formula.